Hello Vinyl community and fellow Beatlemaniacs, um, welcome to this video which is going to be a, a review and uh, discussion about the uh, new uh, Super Deluxe 50th Anniversary Edition of Sgt Pepper. Um, I've had this now um, for the whole weekend and um, I've been listening to it pretty much non-stop since uh, I unboxed it on Friday. Um, which uh, was the previous video on my channel, if you haven't uh, seen that, um, please do check it out. Um, and um, yeah, I've, I've had a little bit of time to uh, gather my thoughts and think about um, highlights and certain elements that uh, jumped out at me. Um, and I think because there's so much in this particular set, um, I can't possibly talk about everything, um, and um, I haven't had a chance yet to read the book um, in its entirety. I've read the um, the first couple of uh, chapters, and, and like I said on the previous video, uh, such a great quality product um, to to give us in this set. A really, really um, brilliant book, and absolutely full of information. That it's it's not just a picture book by any stretch of the imagination, so I'm really impressed with that. Um, obviously I'm going to focus primarily on the music, um, which of course is the reason we're all here. And I think it's probably important before I go into details um, to talk a little bit about where this album ranks. Um, for me in the sort of the, the pantheon of the Beatles um, um, if, if viewers have watched any of my previous videos you will know that Revolver is my favourite Beatles album and um, just 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 to say that is still the case but Pepper was quite a long way down um, I can't remember if it was 5th or 6th it was, it was somewhere there I think I've been a bit harsh. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's just because I'm hearing it anew or because I'm just a little bit Sergeant Pepper saturated at the moment, but it's an absolutely amazing piece of work. I mean, let's just let's just get that um, right out of the bat. I mean, there's no... For me, there isn't really such a thing as a bad Beatles song. I've, I think what the Beatles do is usually their worst work is generally better than their competitors and um when it comes to albums i think pepper was knocked down a little bit uh, just because of its sort of ubiquitousness if you like it was it was everywhere it was the top of polls it was the album of the 60s and i think some people were saying hang on a minute though is it really as good as as all that maybe it isn't but um i, I certainly stand by the fact i think revolver has better songs on it but as an album statement, and as a group of songs at that particular moment in time, you, I can totally understand where all the acclaim came from. Um, and yeah, I've, I've, got the, uh, I've got the set in front of me. So uh, this first disc here is, of course, the sort of headliner, if you like. Um, and it's the new stereo mix. Um, first of all, what a fantastic job Giles Martin and uh, Sam O'Kell did on this. Um, I know a lot of people were worried that you sort of you don't ever go back to this sort of thing and mess with it or whatever. But my point of view is fairly simple. I mean, the original will always be there. The mono mix will always be there. And to be honest, I I I absolutely adore most of the mono albums over everything else but there's something about this new stereo mix that just brings so much more to the surface um for those of you who who don't know um back in the day um it was the mono mixes that the beatles supervised it was the mono mixes that lots and lots of time were spent on and the stereo mixes were kind of just sort of tossed off um very very quickly um, more often than not not in presence of the band so a lot of the stereo versions that came out um, that were um, that came out and then subsequently became the sort of de facto go to versions were kind of inferior. Um, I know when the uh, when the catalogue was re released worldwide in nineteen eighty seven, the first four albums were presented in mono, and then from Help onwards, only the stereo versions were available on CD. 
So that version of Sgt. Pepper is the one that people know, generally. Uh, and it was only in 2009 when we got to hear the mono uh, versions of these albums that you realise just how good they were. So Giles Martin has said in interview that um, the thought behind it was to make a stereo version of the mono. So you've got all the choices the Beatles made. Most most of the choices the Beatles made on the mono mix are, are here on the stereo. Um, so... Um, I could go track by track. I don't think I'm going to. I, I think I'm just going to make general comments, really. Um, the main one is that now the vocals are front and centre, and that's the main thing. Um, beautiful clarity. Uh, they just come at you. Um, and because they had access to the original session tapes, um, pre-bounced session tapes, which means that um, the Beatles were only recording on four track and in order to get more tracks they had to take the four tracks and copy them all onto a single track so that released three more and then due to the complexity of a lot of the Pepper songs um, there was a lot of bouncing going on so some of the details get buried in the mix a little bit and uh, for this new stereo mix you hear things that you didn't hear before uh, in, in amazing clarity. Um, certainly the, the title track just rocks I mean the, the guitar work in that you hear that particularly the um, rhythm guitar that was a little bit buried um, is absolutely brilliant all these um, all these little um, um, hammer-ons and things like that and pull-offs on, on, on the neck just, just sound great um, with a little help from my friends um, I said I wasn't going to go track by track didn't I um, is um, just sounds so fresh. Um, it just sounds like it was recorded yesterday. Um, and I guess if 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 one thing uh, is improved over everything else on this new mix, it's the presence of the drummer and the performance that Ringo gives throughout this album is absolutely amazing. I mean, he famously says that he was sitting around so much during Pepper that he learned to play chess during the sessions just to pass the time. But certainly when he was called upon, what, what a performance he gave. And um, yeah, the drums and percussion on Pepper is absolutely incredible. Um, Loose in the Sky with Diamonds is, is, is one of the songs that was um, very different on the mono. John's vocal was very phased, uh, which is present on this new mix. Um, the bass... Um, which I know Paul took a lot of time over while they were making it. Um, we re recorded it very near the end of each track. Um, it's just amazing. It's beautifully melodic, as it always was, of course, but you can really, really hear it now. Um, general highlights from this remix. Getting Better just hits you right between the eyes. Um, the clarity of the strings on She's Leaving Home... <laughs> Um, those effects at the end of Mr. Kite, um, all those little loops and things, um, really jump out at you. Um, good Morning, Good Morning is probably the biggest revelation for me. It's a sort of unsung track on Pepper, and it really, really rocks. I mean, the, the rhythm guitar is really pushed forward. You, you really hear John's, John's guitar much more than you ever did before. Um, and uh, and the drumming, of course, um, is brilliant. And um, I know um, lots of other people have commented on this on the on the final track, "A Day in the Life." Already one of the finest songs of all time. But what a moment I had when I first heard this new version of "A Day in the Life." It's just so present. You put those headphones on and you just zone out. And it just swirls all around you. The, the crescendo, the orchestral crescendo is just so intense. That final piano chord rings out like never before. John's vocal is just ethereal. Um, I could do a video on, on, on that song alone, to be honest with you. Um, everything about it, if there's one reason to go for this um 
to, to go for this new mix, just listen to A Day in the Life through headphones. You will not be disappointed. Um, yeah, so the, uh, the new mix is a triumph for me um, and um, worth the entry price. Um, now, um, the things I was really, really excited about coming into this release was hearing uh, the session tapes and hoping and hoping that they weren't going to be messed around with like like they were for Anthology. And the good news is they're not. They are presented um, almost as a, as the sort of fly on the wall, as, as you would hope. Um, so hearing take one of Strawberry Fields, for example, which opens the second CD, um, is great to hear those backing vocals. See, beautiful. I don't know why they were excised for Anthology. I'm, I'm, maybe somebody else might know better than I. Um, take 26, which is the, the fast or orchestrated version at full speed. Um, it's brilliant to hear that drumming, that drum track, um, is phenomenal. Um, and certain other things that you get an instrumental version of Penny Lane, which I've never heard before. Uh, very, um, you, you hear the sort of uh, stack of keyboards that that you hear deep in the mix of the master. Um, but hearing that, it sounds very Brian Wilson esque. Like you can really hear those pet sound sessions in there, which of course Paul has admitted publicly and repeatedly that uh, Brian Wilson and pet sounds was a huge influence on this album. Um, of course, Penny Lane didn't make the album, but during the sessions for it, of course, um, that the f take one full take one of a day in the life, um, which which hasn't been officially released before, um, it's beautiful as you'd expect. J John's vocal is almost as good as the master, um, and yeah, and hearing uh, and hearing good morning, good morning. Um, again which was presented on anthology but has been spruced up um remix for this release uh, it's just superb but the main thing that i like about these sessions cds is hearing the chatter in between the um the discussion between the beatles you get a real sense that you are in the room with them as they are making uh this incredible piece of work um cd3 really like uh take one of fixing a hole um Take one of Mr. Kite's great. Um, and if I can just focus in on um, She's Leaving Home, which famously, I think, is George Martin's... Um, is, is, is one of the few scores, maybe the only one that he didn't do himself. He conducted the, uh, conducted the orchestra, but he... Um, was famously busy on a Silla Black session uh, when Paul wanted him, so he went away and got a chap called Mike Leander to score it. And he, he did a decent enough job. It, I don't think it's quite as as sort of pure as George Martin's would have been. It's a little bit lush. But, um, but I mean, I love orchestral music, so it, it's absolutely great to hear an absolutely stunning um, solo harp on She's Leaving Home. And you hear... Uh, two instrumental takes of She's Leaving Home on this um, and you hear some of the details that you don't hear when the vocals are overdubbed. Um, in a similar way to um, when I heard the um, instrumental Alan Rigby on Anthology 2, you, you just hear the intricacy of, the, of, of that backing track and just amazing work that was going on on this album back in, back in the day. Um, so um absolutely fantastic to have these um in depth session tapes and one of the reasons I'm such a big fan of this set is because Apple have just gone completely um fan friendly and they are rewarding us mightily <laughs> um with the depth that we have here um I've also spent a little bit of time with the uh, blu-ray disc as well which uh, looks like this inside um 
I don't have a 5.1 setup at home, so I can't comment on the uh, quality of, of the 5.1 mix, but um, I hear it's wonderful. Um, what I have done is I've watched the promo clips, of course, of A Day in the Life, Strawberry Fields and Penny Lane, but the main reason I wanted to watch the Blu-ray was to see the Making of Sgt Pepper documentary from 1992, which I remember watching as a kid and was um, one of the first times that I was ever... I felt I'd, I was brought into the music and it's probably what set off my obsession well and truly uh, to to really discover all there was to discover about the Beatles. And it's still a great documentary. Um, it, I mean, it predates anthology um, and predates a lot of those um, classic albums, documentaries that you can get so many of these days. But it was just so great to hear the hear all the stories and particularly now in this post George Martin world that we live in um, hearing and seeing him at work in the studio um, with the four track tapes giving us commentaries taking them apart is just absolutely beguiling to see um, and well and truly the fifth Beatle in my eyes I mean there's no there's absolutely no uh, competition there um, particular highlights from the documentary are, um, are when George Martin takes us through the strawberry fields, um, outtakes, um, letting us hear the little details. And the most touching part for me was when he was listening to Take One of a Day in the Life and he was hearing John's voice on the tape. And then uh, when he starts singing, uh, he says even now in this early take he has a voice that sends shivers down the spine and you just see George Martin's eyes possibly glaze over a little bit as he's remembering um, his departed friend and it's just it's an absolutely lovely moment in a lovely documentary it's great to see um, Paul George and Ringo of course um, and telling those stories which I think they were telling Almost, well, for me, they were telling for the first time. I've not heard them before, and um, obviously they've told them a lot since and perhaps lost a little bit of clarity as, as time has gone on. Um, we also get a bit of Brian Wilson on the documentary, um, Phil Collins. Um, sorry, Phil fans. Um, so, yeah, a... a, a a really, really fantastic documentary. Really enjoyed it and um, glad it's on there. So, in summary, um, the 2017 50th anniversary edition of Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band is an absolute triumph. Um, incredible to have the vast array of session tapes we have um, remixed uh, remastered, whatever, and presented um, in as pure a form as they can be. Um, nice to have the mono mix as well, uh, which is always nice to go back to. Um, but whew, the remix album, the 2017 re remix, uh, is on constant rotation at home. Um, I have the vinyl as well, and it sounds great on there as well. Um, a absolutely um, brilliant release. Um, absolutely chuffed to have it, and I'm sure will be um, on constant rotation for quite some time to come. Um, please leave comments below um, with your opinions of this release, um, whether you're as positive as I am or whether you have any any nitpicks or or whatever um and i hope to see you again soon on another video thank you very much for watching and goodbye